My name is Paul Goldsmith from the Burmad Applications Division. In this video, we're going to talk about commissioning and maintaining the Burmad Pressure Reducing Station 72SH with a watchdog emergency valve. This pressure reducing station is designed to give extra security in the case where there is a possibility of damaging overpressure to the consumer pipeline. The primary pressure reducing valve is set to the required downstream pressure, while the emergency valve is set to a slightly higher pressure value. This emergency or watchdog valve remains fully open under normal conditions and will enter pressure reducing operation only if the pressure rises or meets its set pressure. Once in operation, the emergency valve's indicator will move down as the valve starts to modulate. At this point, a limit switch will also be activated, which can send a signal to an alarm system or a control panel. This enables quick initiation of a corrective action by the maintenance team. Before we begin, I'd like to present the major components of this station. When the upstream isolation valve is opened, water first encounters the main strainer, trapping any debris or foreign objects. The water then enters the Burmad Pilot Operated Emergency Pressure Reducing Valve. This valve senses the consumer line pressure using this remote sensing line. Under normal conditions, this valve will stay fully open. It will only start regulating when the consumer supply line pressure rises to or above this valve's set pressure. After exiting the emergency valve, the water then enters into the primary pressure reducing valve. This valve is calibrated using a pilot to reduce the upstream pressure to the required pressure value for the consumer line. From here, if the downstream isolation valve is opened, the water will go on to the consumer line. Also in this installation, we have two pressure gauges, upstream and downstream of the emergency and primary valves. Commissioning procedures should be performed when initially opening and operating a station, either for the first time as a new installation or after intrusive system maintenance. Before operating the system for the first time, it is imperative to flush the pipelines. This ensures that the system is free from any debris that can cause damage or even render it inoperable. After flushing, ensure that the main strainer and the valve's control loop filters are clean. Next, observe the station's installation and make sure that all parts are firmly secured and in place. Proceed by verifying that the upstream and downstream isolation valves are closed and that you have typical upstream pressure. Now open the ball valves on the primary pressure reducing valves control tree. Next, Ensure that the service valves on all pressure gauges are open. Note that the pilot levels of the primary valve and the emergency valve are both set at the factory. You can check the factory pilot levels by reading the label on both pilot covers. Here's the label on the primary pressure reducing valve. And here's the label on the emergency valve. Before introducing flow to the station, you need to make sure that its preset pressure levels are compatible with your downstream pressure requirements. If this is the case, you're good to go. All that's left to do is to open the upstream and then the downstream isolation valves to fill the consumer pipeline in a controlled manner. Keep monitoring the downstream pressure until the flow stabilizes and you reach a pressure that is compatible with your requirements. All right, now let's talk about the other case, which is when the factory set pressure level doesn't meet your requirements and you need to adjust the station's downstream pressure in this case, all you need to do at this point is to prepare for it. This is done by completely unscrewing, counterclockwise, the primary reducing valve's pilot adjustment screw until it becomes loose. This allows us to later calibrate this valve. Next, on the emergency or watchdog valve, turn the pilot adjusting screw clockwise to the end. This action adjusts the set pressure of the emergency valve to the highest possible value. It ensures that this valve remains fully open until we start calibrating its emergency level. Okay, now slowly fully open the upstream isolating valve to fill the station with water. Proceed by partially opening the downstream isolating valve. At this stage, you're ready to calibrate the station's downstream pressure. Note that to simulate actual conditions, 
you should have a typical consumer line open while calibrating, which should give you an average system flow. If this is not achievable, then a minimum flow rate will suffice, though not ideal. Also note that at this stage, you should not expect any flow through the station. The reason is that the pressure reducing valve will have closed shortly after introducing flow to the station, since earlier we completely unscrewed its pilot's adjustment screw. Let's begin the calibration process and reach the desired emergency level pressure at the consumer line. Start by slowly turning the primary valve's pilot adjustment screw clockwise until you feel a resistance and hear the valve opening. At this point, the downstream consumer's pipeline will start to fill. Continue to turn the adjustment screw clockwise to raise the primary valve's downstream pressure to two bars or 30 psi above the required consumer line pressure. For example, if the required downstream pressure is four bars or 60 psi, turn the adjustment screw clockwise until you reach an outlet pressure of six bars or 90 psi. Now let's turn our attention to the emergency valve and set the emergency level. Earlier, we fully opened this valve, so currently it's not regulating the pressure, even though we have a downstream pressure at the emergency level, which to remind you is six bars. What we need to do to properly set the emergency level is to slowly turn the emergency valve's pilot adjustment screw counterclockwise. Do this while constantly monitoring the downstream pressure gauge. At a certain point while you turn the screw, the emergency valve will take over and the downstream pressure level will start to fall. As soon as this happens, continue to turn the adjustment screw until the downstream pressure reads five bars or one bar above the required consumer line pressure. The emergency valve is now set to five bars. When done calibrating the emergency valve, don't forget to close the locking nut. Now let's get back to the primary valve and reduce its pressure setting from the current level to the required consumer line level. To do that, turn the primary valve's adjustment screw counterclockwise while monitoring the downstream pressure gauge until you reach the required downstream pressure level. In our case, this level is four bars or 60 psi. That's it. Finish the calibration process by closing the locking nut and replace the protected plastic cover. When the pressure has stabilized, fully open the downstream isolating valve. Whether or not you performed recalibration, the next step is to remove any residual air from the pressure reducing valve's control loop and chamber. This ensures a more stable and positive pressure control. To vent air from the valve's control loop, loosen the tube eye bolt attached to the valve cover at the highest point of the valve's control chamber. You may notice air exiting the eye bolt. As soon as you get a flow of water without air, retighten the tube fitting eye bolt. Before moving on to maintenance, I'd like to explain a few things about the limit switch in the cam, which are part of the alerting system of the watchdog station. The cam is attached to the emergency valve's main shaft, and both the limit switch and the cam are calibrated at the factory, and rarely require recalibration. The switch retains its idle circuit connection as long as the pressure level has not reached the emergency level, which means the emergency valve is fully open. If the emergency pressure level is reached, the emergency valve starts to close and the limit switch alerts the building management system so responsible authorities can take action. Now let's discuss maintenance procedures for the Burmad pressure reducing station with backup watchdog valve. Note that your schedule for preventative maintenance depends on the actual conditions of use and the station's environment. Here we discuss a schedule suited to a valve operating under average conditions. On a weekly basis, perform a visual inspection of the station and check for leaks or external damage. In addition, observe the unit's pressure gauges to make sure that the pressure upstream and downstream are as they should be. Once a year, close both the upstream and downstream isolation valves and clean the main strainer and the valve control loop filter. Every three to five years, inspect the internal condition of the pressure reducing valve. Now let's summarize what we covered today. In this video, you learned how to commission and maintain the Burmad PRV pressure reducing station with a backup watchdog valve. You saw how to prepare the station for first time use and how to calibrate the downstream consumer line pressure and the emergency backup watchdog valve 
to meet your specific requirements. We at Burmad hope you find this information useful and invite you to contact us with any questions or issues you encounter. Thanks for watching.